we need to round the numbers below to the nearest 10. So first we have 215. Because we're rounding to the nearest 10, we need to remember the place value of each digit. So in a three digit number, we have our hundreds, then our tens, then our ones. So because we're rounding to the nearest 10, we can start by circling our tens digit and then we underline the digit to the right. So underline our ones digit. We can see that we have five ones. And if we have five or more, we round up. So because we're rounding up, this one is going to become a two because rounding up increases the place value we've circled by one. Now digits to the left of what we've circled always stay the same and digits to the right turn into zeros, so we get 220. The two in our hundreds stays the same, because we're rounding up, the one in our tens turns into a two, and when we're rounding to the nearest ten, the ones digit always turns into a zero. Now on a number line, we can see that 215 is between 210 and 220. So the closest multiples of 10 are 210 and 220, because if we were to keep on counting up in tens, so 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on, we would eventually get to 210, then 220, and 215 is between those numbers. Now 215 is right in the middle of 210 and 220. But if it's right in the middle, when we're rounding, we always round up. Now we have 492. Again, we can circle our tens digit and underline the digit to the right, underline our ones digit. So remember, five or more, we round up but four or less, we round down, and we have a two, so we're rounding down. That means the digit we've circled stays the same. So we have 490, because digits to the left stay the same, and because we're rounding to the nearest 10, our ones digit turns into a zero. And on a number line, you can see that if we were to count up in multiples of 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, and so on, we would eventually get to 490, and then the next multiple of 10 is 500, and 492 is between those numbers. But because 492 is closer to 490, that's why we round down. So that's why looking at our ones digit helps us decide whether we're rounding down or up. If it's four or less, we round down because that means it's closer to the previous multiple of 10. Now let's round 333 to the nearest 10. So we find our tens digit, underline our ones, and because it's four or less, we're rounding down. So the tens digit stays the same, giving us 330. On a number line, we can see 333 is between 330 and 340, but it's closer to the previous multiple of 10, so that's why we round down. Now, 897. So we can circle our tens digit and underline our ones. Remember, if it's five or more, we round up, and we have a seven, so we're rounding up. Now that usually means the tens digit increases by one, but we already have a nine in our tens, and we can't write 10 in our tens because we can only have one digit in each place value. So what we need to do here is look to the left and take our hundreds and our tens digits together. Remember, when we're rounding up, what we've circled increases by one, and one more than 89 is 90. So these digits here change to a nine and a zero 
because one more than 89 is 90, and as always, our ones digit turns to a zero, so that's why we have 900. On a number line, we can see that 897 is closer to 900 than it is to 890. Those are the multiples of 10 that it's between, because if we counted up in tens, we would say 890, and then the next multiple of 10 would be 900. But it's closer to 900, so that's why we round up. Finally, we have 303. To round to the nearest 10, we find our tens digit and underline the place value to the right. If it's four or less, like it is here, with a three in the ones, we round down. So that means the digit we've circled stays the same. Digits to the left always stay the same, digits to the right turn into zeros, so we get 300. 303 is closer to 300 than it is to 310, so that's why we round down.